for all of these things to work, I realized my step number six should actually be my step number one. And that is to educate myself on really understanding how do I want my beginning to be within investing? How do I, as a beginner investor, want to make this whole thing work for me? A very, very warm welcome this evening. I trust that you guys are doing well. Let's just see. Yep, everything is still good, still going. Tonight, we're going to go through how do beginners invest in property? I'm going to share with you my six-step plan to getting started. This is part of how I got started. My six-step plan on getting started in property, if you're just a beginner and wanting to understand, but hey, where do I start? One of the first things I believe that you need to understand is you need to identify where you are financially. And why would you want to identify with where you are financially? Well, one of the biggest reasons would be is you're going to have to understand and remind yourself why you're getting into property. Yes, you want to get into property because it's a business. It will leave a good legacy. All those beautiful things, right? However, what you want to know is that where I am financially, what is it that I'm able to do? Which then means it's going to direct you into what your strategy within property investing is going to be, right? So that is going to be my second step. But I just want to talk a little bit about finances and actually understanding where you are financially. Because when you understand where you are financially, it will dictate your strategy. When you understand where you are financially, you're going to understand, okay, cool. So if I don't have money, how am I going to get the money to line it up to get the property that I'm wanting? And if I get the property that I'm wanting, if they are asking for deposits, now what? Do I have money for the closing costs and the bond costs that are associated to purchasing property? The bond cost would mean the bank is going to give, give you the money, for example. So you'd have to check if your credit limit is in order. And so when the bank gives you the money, there's a whole lot of administration that goes into creating this bond and a whole lot more, right? I'm just simplifying it. So you want to understand where you're going to get the bond costs from. And then the transfer cost that I've just tapped onto is the attorneys or the conveyances that are going to be involved in the process needs to, to move then you know the the ownership of the property from the person selling it to you who's going to be the buyer again very simplified explanation so the biggest thing you do want to understand right now is what is my financial standing what financial stage am i at right now because it's, it's got a knock-on effect to these things that i have mentioned so that would be step number one now that you've established where you are, right? Now you're going to think, okay, cool. It's going to inform step number two. Step number two, what is that all about? Identifying your specific strategy. You must choose a strategy within property investing of what you're going to be doing. So what is a strategy? In fact, yesterday I'd gone through quite a few definitions. So I'll also link this particular video back to yesterday's one in case you missed it. So the strategy is really to say, am I looking for passive income or am I looking for active income? Now, when I got started, I understood that my financial footing at that time was not good. I was overextended at the bank. I needed to create a second tangible, like something so tangible, like this is where my mind was. I needed a second tangible income stream and I was going to be doing that via property, right? So it informed my strategy that I needed to go where they call it the creative finance route. The creative finance is things like you, you will hear the no money down deals. You'll hear property wholesaling or property sourcing. You also hear joint, venture, joint ventures, angel investors and things like that. So I needed to choose a strategy that did not require that I take money out of my pocket for the process of acquiring that particular property, right? So this is what I mean by step two is in choosing your strategy because when you choose your strategy, 
you're then going to understand if I am if I am going. So let's say you, for example, you are deciding to go with the option of of, of rentals. You're going to go and buy a rental, right? So you will then need to understand. So if I'm going to buy a rental so that I can get a passive income over a period of time, I then need to look in a specific type of area, which then leads us into step number three. Understand your area. Why would I say understand your area? When you decided that you've got the rental, the rental as, as a passive income, you then need to say, okay, which areas are really good for rental, right? Because you don't want to go and look in an area where like, there's not much movement going on or whatever the case is. Ask yourself when you were renting, what were the things that you were looking at? What was your criteria that you looked at, at from a renting point of view to say, hey, I need to get going with this business, right? And this is now from where I speak from. When you understand your financial standing and you've chosen your strategy, in this case, as an example, as rental income, you're then going to know that the area that you're looking in is going to give you properties where there is rental, which then now speaks to the fourth thing. What is the fourth thing? The fourth step is now I'm going to create a plan on finding these properties, okay, because I know why I'm looking for it. I know the type of property I'm looking for. I've got a picture in my mind that this is going to be a rental opportunity. It's close to schools. It's close to uh, transportation or whatever the case is, right? So in my fourth step, I now need to understand, so how am I going to go about finding these? But if you don't plan on what you're wanting to get, you're actually planning on failing because you don't have your ducks in a row. So if I create my plan of finding property, I'm now creating a process for myself because then when I find a property, my next thing is, okay, cool. Now I know my financial stage. I know the strategy that I'm in. I know the area that I'm looking in. I've created a plan and I've started finding these properties. What is the next thing? And that's the fifth step in this whole plan. Because when you find the property, you must go and view it. Now when you're done viewing it, and then what? That is step number five. I analyze the property meaning i understand what's going on in the market what is the market value of such a type of property right and when i then i start understanding what is the market value of that property i do what they call due diligence meaning i understand what that particular property i'm looking into can give me from an investment point of view so that's what my step five is about. I'm analyzing. I'm running my different calculations. I need to understand the rental income that I get from such a type of property is going to cover my bond and it's going to cover my monthly operating expenses such as levies, rates and taxes, electricity and so forth. And then it's going to give me a small pot of money at the end of it, right? Which is called cash flow. And if I do this recipe a few times and say, for example, my one property gives me 1,500. And what if I do this four times? My four properties are going to give me 6,000 Rand. Now knowing that the bond has been serviced, my monthly operating expenses has been serviced because the income I'm getting in is covering these things. And this money that's coming in at the end of the day, you start questioning what am I going to do with the 6,000 Rand? All right. And that for me really just talks to how am I going to expand my business and expanding my business? I'm going to look at what I have. I'm going to look into equity of these different properties. I'm going to look at this cash flow. And as a collective, can I take this to the bank and they help me to actually expand on this? But I tell you, for all of these things to work, I realize my step number six should actually be my step number one. And that is to educate myself on really understanding how do I want my beginning to be within investing? How do I, as a beginner investor, want to make this whole thing work for me? How is it going to tick 
all the boxes. And that's why I say, you know, my six step plan to getting started, especially now in 2021, in the circumstances that we're in, we need to be savvy about it. And the way to be savvy is in step number six is to get my education around property investing sorted. Many of these things I could teach for days and days and days and days, but that is four years of experience, me training. How do I get four years of experience into a 10 minute video? How do I get four years of experience into a three hour video? Because I've got a three hour training. If you go down in the description below, that leads to three hours of free training to give you just some sort of insights in how do beginners invest in property? What would you have to go through? But my best one I've always come back to is my step number six. Have I educated myself correctly? Because that was the distinction between the side hustles that I've lost so much money with and property that has created time freedom for me and therefore given me back my time that I'm able to leverage and then be able to expand on the different income streams. So that is how beginners start their journey to invest in property right now in 2021. So what I will do is I will put up a playlist right here. It's called Getting Started in Property Investing. And if you are interested, especially in short videos like the one I've just shared with you right now, you'll be able to click on this particular playlist and get started. Otherwise, you can go down in the description below, click on the link where it says free hour, three hours of free training. Or if you say, you know what, Jen, I'm past that, you can always join me in my next property investing class where I lay the foundation and we talk about this from beginning to end so that you can understand your foundation before you get going within the property investing space.